Dr. John Woods, and I'm the Chief Academic Officer and Provost at the University of Phoenix. And uh, in my role at the University of Phoenix, I oversee all uh, curriculum and faculty and a significant portion of our uh, student support services. Uh, I've been with the university almost three years. I guess a couple things stand out as surprises over the last four months and having made this uh, move. Um, the first is that um, students who, uh, like I said, signed up to come to our campus uh, have really loved this and loved it for more than the fact that it, it, uh, it, it placed a priority on their safety and their health. They've really loved using the tool this way. Um, and so we've had a lot of students uh, uh, in the course feedback that we collect in the, in the surveys that we do at the end of every course we've had a lot of students ask, could this be something that uh, we use uh, more frequently or more routinely uh, in the future? So that was a, a you know, pleasant surprise. And then we have a lot of um, uh, faculty, uh, I guess the other big surprise is we have a lot of faculty who took to it so well. Um, uh, some of them teach online sections for us and said, could I use this in my online section? Uh, and so we're exploring uh, really some shifts from what was purely asynchronous in our online model to doing some more synchronous activities using the collaboration tool uh, within the platform, which, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I think people think of online as, uh, you know, it's, it's best attributes are the, uh, the flexibility that it gives people in terms of both time and place and uh, to have both students and faculty asking for something to be in real time, uh, you know, uh, sort of challenges our notions a little bit about uh, how widely accepted and excited people are uh, about asynchronous learning. So we'll probably do some uh, testing in the future uh, to leverage synchronous learning in our otherwise asynchronous online classes. So that was, uh, that was a nice surprise as well. I think the third thing that we sort of expected might, might have been a bit of a surprise as to how much this has been the case. Um, but uh, when we survey students periodically through this last four months, uh, at the very beginning, everyone is thrilled and, and, and nobody wants to go back to learning in the classroom because of the situation. And as you survey them a little bit uh, over time, you see more and more of them are, are really ready to, for this to be over. They're, you know, they're ready to get out of the house and they're ready to not be doing synchronous online learning anymore because it's ultimately not what they selected. Um, and, uh, and so we'll, we'll call that sort of, uh, we don't use Zoom, but Zoom fatigue or virtual learning, asynchronous learning fatigue or um, just the buildup of frustration of not being able to get out and have a normal life. I think is wearing on people. And uh, while we sort of expected it, I don't think we could have predicted the, the, you know, the curve associated with it, that more and more people are, are really, really ready to get back. And, and we've had obviously a setback recently where we were all uh, making plans to return to the campuses and uh, go back to teaching the way we were. And we've had to extend that a couple of times. So, uh, you know, it's certainly the right thing to do to, to keep going like, like we are. Uh, but I, th I think it is wearing on people.